Your faith can receive healing. Your faith can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Your faith can receive the blessing of God. It can receive prosperity, deliverance, success in your business, success in your family. Your faith can receive whatever miracle you need in your life. But it can't receive a single thing if your faith is sitting on the couch. Everything we receive in the new covenant is received by faith. That means you need to learn what faith is, how faith works, and how to grow in your faith. Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Life is not simply about existing here on earth and waiting for heaven. No, life is about abundance. You and I were created to worship God in spirit and in truth. Worship is much more than an act. Worship is a lifestyle. When Jesus is at the center of your life, your priorities will change and so will the flow of God's blessing into your life. From Faith Life Worship Center in Naples, Florida, this is Pastor Heath Jarvis. Hey everyone, welcome to the broadcast today. I want to give you a hypothetical scenario. I want you to imagine for a moment that you have a best friend who is a millionaire. Now this friend of yours has been your confidant for years and you've been their confidant as well. You've shared your hopes and your fears and your dreams with each other. You've not only confided in each other, but you've been there for each other through thick and through thin. You've helped each other out a lot. You've consoled each other. You've counseled each other through life's challenges. You are the best of friends. Now, one day, your millionaire friend says to you, you know, you've been such a good friend to me through all of these years, all the ups and downs in my life. I want to do something nice for you. I want to hire you a servant. Now, this person can do whatever you need them to do for you. They are a master chef. They're a certified mechanic. They're a licensed plumber. They're an electrician, a master carpenter. They can do landscaping. They can cook. They can sew. They can clean. They can do laundry. They can paint. Anything that you need. And don't worry about putting them to work because I'm paying them very, very well. I'm taking care of their salary. Just accept this blessing as a gift from me. And they're going to be at your house at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So the next morning, you wake up, and at 9 a.m., this servant shows up at your house, and they ring the doorbell. And you answer the door, and they introduce themselves. They say, hey, I was hired by your friend. I'm your personal servant. What do you need me to do? And your answer is this. Well, you know, I can't think of anything that I really need right now, so why don't you go uh, sit down on the couch and make yourself comfortable? Um, would you like something to drink? Uh, I can make you some tea. Uh, here's the TV remote. Make yourself comfortable. Find something on TV. In the meantime, I'm going to go throw a load of laundry into the washer, and then I'm going to go outside and mow the lawn. And when I'm done, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to make us uh, some lunch around noon. Now, does that make any sense to anyone? Here you've got this perfectly qualified and well-paid servant whose sole purpose at your house is to do whatever you want them to do for you. They've been hired to help you out. And here you are doing the laundry, you're making tea, you're mowing the lawn, you're preparing lunch. The servant should be doing these things for you. The servant was hired to do those tasks for you. The servant is being paid a very, very good salary by your best friend to carry out those tasks for you. So in a sense, it's a slap in the face to not only the servant, but also to your best friend who's paying for that servant's salary. It's a slap in their face to not put that servant to work. Now, Jesus describes a very similar situation in Luke chapter 17. The apostles approached Jesus regarding their faith. And I want to show you what Jesus said. Let's read what happened. Luke chapter 17, verse 5. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. So the Lord said, 
If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. And which of you, having a servant plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat? But will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk, and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant? because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So the apostles come to Jesus and they make a request. Lord, increase our faith. Sounds like a pretty good request, doesn't it? Sounds like a godly spiritual thing to ask of the Lord, doesn't it? Lord, increase our faith. What was Jesus' response? Well, in verse 6, the first thing that Jesus said is, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can move this mulberry tree. In Matthew chapter 17, Jesus told the disciples, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. So faith, even as small as a mustard seed, can produce the impossible. So evidently, the size of your faith is not the issue here. Lord, increase our faith, the disciples said. And the first thing that Jesus says is, you don't need an increase in your faith. Because even faith like a mustard seed can accomplish the impossible. Then Jesus seemingly changes subjects in verse 7. But keep in mind, he's still answering their request to increase their faith. Jesus says, if you have a servant working in the field, when the servant comes into the house, do you tell them, hey, take a load off your feet and get, some, get yourself something to eat? Or do you actually tell him, make me something to eat, and when I'm full and when I'm satisfied, make yourself something to eat. In other words, Jesus is telling them, if you have a servant, put the servant to work. That's what he's there for. In verse 9, Jesus says, does the employer thank the servant because he was doing his job? I think not. The servant's just doing what he was paid to do. Now again, Jesus is still answering the disciples' query about increasing their faith. The first thing that he told them was, you don't need an increase in your faith because even faith as small as a mustard seed is going to produce anything that you need. And then he begins comparing our faith to a servant. Basically what he's saying, he's telling the disciples, all you need to do is put your servant to work. God has given you a servant called faith. You don't need an increase in your faith. You simply need to put your faith to work. How many times do Christians rely on man's way of doing things when they face a problem? If you get a headache, what's the first thing that you do? Do you run to the medicine cabinet and pop a couple of pills? Or do you pray? If you're sick, is the doctor the first person you call? Or is Jesus the first person you call? What kingdom are you trusting in? Are you putting your faith to work? Your faith is a servant. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong to pop an aspirin. I'm not saying that it's wrong to call a doctor. What I'm asking is, what is the first system that you run to for your answers? Jesus said, and I'm paraphrasing here, you have a servant called faith. Why aren't you putting your servant to work? When he's done working in the field, put him to work in the house. You have a servant. You need to put him to work. Let's take a short break, and when we come back, let's look deeper into this concept of your servant called faith. Stay right there. It's going to get really good. I'll be right back. More teaching after this. Pastor Heath is pleased to offer today's teaching series to help you in your walk with God. Go to faithlifeworshipcenter.com right now to order your downloadable teaching series entitled A Servant Called Faith, an eight-part teaching series yours available as an instant download for just $15. Simply place your order on our secure server at faithlifeworshipcenter.com through our online store. Then we will send you an email link to download the MP3s of this powerful teaching series by Pastor Heath Jarvis. Take Pastor Heath with you wherever you go with this powerful teaching series. A Servant Called Faith, yours today for just 
Go now to faithlifeworshipcenter.com. Let's go back to Pastor Heath's message. So today we are looking at Jesus' words to the disciples in Luke chapter 17. The disciples said to Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. And Jesus, Jesus basically told them two things. Number one, you don't need an increase in your faith because even the smallest seed of faith can supernaturally produce the impossible. And number two, if an employer puts his servants to work, don't you think that you should put your faith to work? In verse 9, Jesus says, does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. You see, you don't have to thank your faith. Your faith is there to produce for you. You can thank God for your faith because He was the one who gave you the faith to begin with. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Did you catch that? You've been saved by grace through faith, and that, not of yourselves. That what? That faith. The faith that you have that allows you to receive God's gracious gift of salvation is not your faith. It is a gift of God. See, that's how awesome our God is. He not only offered salvation to us by His grace, but He also offered us the faith to receive the grace that He's making available to us. God's grace made it available our faith receives it, but the awesome thing is that we can't even take credit for exercising our faith because God was the one who gave us the faith to begin with. This brings us back to the scenario that I mentioned at the beginning of this message. If your millionaire best friend paid for you to have a servant who could do anything that you needed, wouldn't you be a fool to not put that servant to work? And in the same way, God has given you a servant called faith. Wouldn't you be a fool to not put your faith to work in your life? God gave each of us a measure of faith so that we could receive salvation. But not only that, your faith can receive every great and precious promise that is available to us in the Word of God. Your faith can receive healing. Your faith can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Your faith can receive the blessing of God. It can receive prosperity, deliverance, success in your business, success in your family. Your faith can receive whatever miracle you need in your life. But it can't receive a single thing if your faith is sitting on the couch, sipping tea, watching game shows, while you're running around the house doing all of the tasks in your own strength. We're not supposed to be operating in our own might, in our own strength, in our own power, in our own understanding. We're supposed to be operating in the power of God's Holy Spirit, which is made available to us by faith in our Savior, Jesus Christ. The next time that you have a headache coming on, before you run to pop an aspirin, try laying hands on yourself first, commanding that headache to go in the name of Jesus. I had a lady at church do this one time, uh, right after I had preached a similar message to what I'm preaching today. And I had recommended, the next time that you get a headache, instead of running to the medicine cabinet, instead of popping an aspirin, lay hands on yourself. Well, the next Sunday, she came to church and she said, Pastor Heath, it happened. Uh, I was starting to get a headache at work, and I went to look for an aspirin in my purse, but then I stopped and I remembered what you had said. Lay hands on yourself. She says, I laid hands on myself and I commanded that headache to go in the name of Jesus, and it instantly left. Yep, that's how the kingdom is supposed to work. Put your faith to work. Don't let your faith sit on the couch. Put your faith to work. God gave you a servant called faith. Put him to work. I'll be right back. 
Pastor Heath is pleased to offer today's teaching series to help you in your walk with God. Go to faithlifeworshipcenter.com right now to order your downloadable teaching series entitled A Servant Called Faith, an eight-part teaching series, yours available as an instant download for just $15. Simply place your order on our secure server at faithlifeworshipcenter.com through our online store. Then we will send you an email link to download the MP3s of this powerful teaching series by Pastor Heath Jarvis. Take Pastor Heath with you wherever you go with this powerful teaching series. A Servant Called Faith, yours today for just $15. Go now to faithlifeworshipcenter.com. Come on, put your hands together tonight. Yeah, yeah. Tonight, help me sing quiet. I'm lifting you up.
Pastor Heath Jarvis is an award-winning and internationally published songwriter and author. He is pleased to offer today's song to you as a download from our website for only 99 cents. Just go to faithlifeforshipcenter.com, then go to our store to browse our downloadable music. Each song is only 99 cents. While you're there, you can also browse our other products, like downloadable books, downloadable teaching series, and apparel. All of our products help support the cost of this broadcast and the ministry of Faith Life Worship Center in Naples, Florida. Go to faithlifeforshipcenter.com to place your order today. If you enjoy the ministry of Faith Life Worship Center, we would love for you to connect with us on social media. You can follow Faith Life Worship Center on Facebook or on Instagram by searching Faith Life Worship Center. You can also find Pastor Heath Jarvis on Facebook. Check out our youth group by going to Fly Faith Life Youth on Facebook or Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel by searching Faith Life Worship Center. If you still want to learn more about us, go to our website, faithlifeworshipcenter.com, where you can learn about our church, Listen to other messages, find information on events, browse our store, or support our ministry financially. As much as we'd love to connect with you online, we'd love it even more if we could connect with you in person. So visit us at Faith Life Worship Center in Naples, Florida. And maybe you're tuning in today and you don't know anything about Jesus or Christianity or this God that we love and worship. Maybe you don't know anything about what it means to be in right standing with God or to know that you're on your way to heaven after you die. So give me just a couple of minutes and I'm going to give you the gospel in a nutshell. In the beginning, God created the universe and he created the earth and he placed mankind here on earth. Man sinned and that forced God to remove his hand of protection and provision over man. About 4,000 years later, God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to earth to become the ultimate payment for man's sin. Jesus lived a sinless life. He was tempted in every single way that we are, but Jesus never bowed to that temptation. Now, unlike Jesus, all of us are born into a sin nature. We've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And you may say, well, I'm a pretty good person. I think if I were to die, God would give me a pass. The truth of the matter is, even your best attempt on your best day can't come close to matching the holiness of God. The Bible says that your righteousness in and of itself is like a used menstrual cloth. You can't measure up in and of yourself. But thank God, because of Jesus, you don't have to measure up because Jesus measured up on your behalf. He took all of the sin of mankind upon himself, his sinless self, and he died with it. He took every bad, sinful, wicked thing that you've ever done, every sinful thing that you're doing right now, every sin that you will ever commit, and he died with it. Your sin has been eternally paid for. Now, the only thing left for you to do is to receive by faith what Jesus did for you. Now, how do you do this? By believing with your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus lived a sinless life, that he took your sin upon himself and died with it. And on the third day, he rose from the dead, but your sin didn't. So in a moment, I'm going to say a prayer and I want you to pray this prayer with me. And I want you to pray it out loud. Don't just say it in your heart. Don't just say it in your mind. Say these words out loud. The Bible says, believe with your heart and confess with your mouth. So believe these words that we're about to speak. Believe them in your heart, but say these words out loud with me. Say this, Father in heaven, I thank you for loving me so much that you sent Jesus to be the sacrifice for my sin. Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that you were willing to suffer and die in my place. You suffered so that I wouldn't have to. You died so that I could live eternally. You took my sin upon yourself and died with it. On the third day, you rose again, but my sin did not. By faith, I receive the price you paid for me, and I thank you for it. I am a Christian. I am born again. 
I am in right standing with you, God, and I will live for you as you show me how. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, if you said this prayer for the very first time in your life, let me be the first person to welcome you to the family. You are in for a great ride. Now, I would love for you to reach out and contact us. Let us know about the decision that you just made and the prayer that you just prayed with us. I'm not trying to get you to join anything. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to add you to a mailing list. We just want to help you get started with your walk with God. I love being a Christian. I love the life that I live. And I know that you're going to love it too. Faith Life Worship Center in Naples, Florida is a Bible-believing, spirit-filled, non-denominational church. With dynamic children's and youth ministries. There's something for everybody here. If you're looking for a good, solid church. With a contemporary worship experience. A great family atmosphere. With lots of fun. And plenty of great fellowship. Come and join us. Faith Life Worship Center. FaithLifeWorshipCenter.com